Hey everyone, I got another special guest. Tristan is here in the house. Hey, how you doing, Tristan? Here in my house. Uh, primal, primal Health, uh, Primal Edge Health. That's your uh, your YouTube channel. Um, right. it's awesome. Hey, listen, I wanted to I wanted to bring you on because um, I got your book. Okay, this book. Oh, there you go. Is Check very it. very interesting. Very interesting book. Um, you know, I'm always looking for good ideas for cooking and uh, something that's definitely that aligns with my philosophy. And uh, you put some, ser or you and your wife put some serious work into this book. I mean, the amazing, the pictures, the amount of work. I mean, that's one thing. I mean, I have a couple um, recipe books, but they're just digital. They're not anything high end because of the amount of work it takes. I don't know how you pulled, how you guys pulled this off, but well, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of the face behind the camera and Jessica's the magic behind it all. And she, she did such a good job, man. I really appreciate the, uh, you know, the kind words there, but I, I love it too. The cover is so pretty. I mean, it's uh, the only, my only complaint is there's not enough fat on those steaks. <laughs> yeah, they're those are lean. way too lean. That butcher trimmed off too much fat for that photo we got. Well, um, it's just, it's like a piece of art. I mean, like even the images of like, wow, well, okay, I want that. I want that. We got to make that um it's awesome and then like even like the um my wife um she's going to be making a lot of things in here but one thing she likes is the uh, uh bone marrow she just loves that bone she can live on bone marrow oh, oh my gosh. gosh she's like her and i would get along because i'm a bone marrow enthusiast so and i think a lot of people miss out on some of the best parts of the animal um you know the bone marrow the heart, the heart can be really affordable too. Actually, a lot of these really good parts until the most recent push with a lot of people getting interested in like Weston A. Price's information uh, and the paleo movement, doctors like yourself, uh, you know, teaching people how to eat nose to tail. Uh, and of course, on our channel, we, uh, we've been promoting this as well. But people used to, just a few years ago, have no idea that heart or liver could be so affordable, could be so delicious. And um, I think people miss out on a lot of the best pieces of the animal. I mean, I get, don't get me wrong, I love a ribeye. You know, I love me a nice T-bone. But, um, you know, some of them, if you're doing grass-fed, sometimes there's just not enough fat. Mm -hmm. right? So that's kind of an mm -hmm. issue here. Grass-fed is always the way to go, in my opinion, right? Supporting local cattle ranchers. I uh, had a local cattle rancher from A2 Ranch on my channel the other day, and he's down in Texas. And it was just so cool being, just getting able to see my audience connect with him. And there were people in his local area who were able to pick up some meat directly from the producer after listening to him on the show. And we always recommend that. But the problem with some of the grass fed is seasonally, in certain times of the season, they don't have as much fat. So bone marrow is one of the best things to use. Suet, mm. I also like. Mm. Um, so yeah, we, we wanted to teach people how to eat nose to tail. I know you're talking about this all the time as well. Uh, teach people how to use the entire animal. Um, and of course, how to get in the good, healthy animal fats. So this book, what's unique about this book, um, and, and thanks so much again for having me on, Dr. Bird. Mm -hmm. um, I really, really appreciate you know everything you do on your channel, everything you've been doing to direct people and uh, how to live healthily, how to eat the right foods, how to do a ketogenic diet the right way. Um, I think you've done a lot of great work and you definitely have uh, brought so much attention to the movement here and have been a really po uh, positive influence on so many people. I mean, the amount of people who contacted me and said, hey man, I found you and Dr. Berg's channel and look at this, I lost 100 pounds or I lost wow. 200 pounds or I reversed my type 2 diabetes or I've got my autoimmune condition under control. So many people have told me that they found keto from Dr. Berg and channels like ours, Primal Edge Health as well. Um, but what's cool about this book is it's, it's all animal foods. So a lot of people, they start doing a ketogenic diet. We actually, I'm sure you talk to a lot of these folks as well. A lot of people end up finding that keto is great, but sometimes they have to take it to the next level and look at maybe food sensitivities. And a lot of people have been talking about a carnivore diet as like the ultimate elimination diet. And that's kind of what I see it as. You're removing any possible irritants. You're removing any possible foods that might be giving you a reaction. And you're whittling it down to the bare essentials, which are the animal fats and the animal proteins. So whole unrefined animal foods, uh, for me, are the crux of my diet, are the baseline of our kids' diet as well. 
and they eat lots of fruit, they eat carbohydrates, they're growing children. So we don't put them on a straight low carb keto diet, but our whole family eats animal fats in abundance. And the reason we made this book the way we did it, using no plants at all, no plants harmed in the making of this book, it's all animal foods. We call it zero carb recipes for people who really love animals. And uh, you know, it's kind of a cheeky comment, kind of having to laugh at the, uh, at the vegan trolls out there. Uh, but we made this to help people with autoimmune conditions, people who are trying to get back into eating meat, people who might be doing a um, autoimmune protocol type diet or even a GAPS type diet, the gut and psychology uh, syndrome, or um, you know, a low FODMAPS diet or a full carnivore diet. We wanted this book to be applicable to all these folks across the board and teach people how to use the whole animal and how to eat nose to tail and how to get all the nutrients we need from the most bioavailable foods that are the most easily digestible foods in the world. And those are always gonna be the animal foods. So to me, it's all about the animal foods and uh, we're really happy to be able to uh, you know, put out a book like this. And it's something that's unique. It's something that's definitely, um, that I thought was much needed in the space. And uh, yeah, Jessica really did a really good job on this book. So I can't take any credit for it. It was all her. I'm just the, uh, I'm just the, uh, the face and the, You're just uh, the messenger. <laughs> exactly. Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> right. Well, um, you know, years ago, I, I remember like as a kid, um, my, my family's from Sweden, my, you know, my grandparents stuff. So we would go over to their side of the family, their house, and they would, they would have, um, they would cook with lard. They cook with lard, a lot of lard. And, uh, you know, I remember in college, chiropractic college, it was just been grain that you don't eat saturated fat. So I remember eating bacon and taking this towel and just dampening out all the grease and everything and just getting rid of all this fat and like, it's bad. And as I'm eating a pizza and chips and I'm like, I got it wrong. But the, the, the back then they ate a lot of lard, they, which by the way, um, can potentially have a lot of vitamin D. Um, uh -huh. vitamin D. And here's the thing about vitamin D, it's really, really, really hard for people to get vitamin D unless they know what the heck they're doing. And what, 57% of the population is deficient in vitamin D right there. And um, that's like incredible. So where do you get vitamin D? I mean, it's, you, you, you can get maybe a little bit of, uh, I think, D2 in mushrooms, but that's not gonna satisfy even a fraction. And uh, unless you're getting enough sun, you know, you, you which do, very few people do. Who's getting enough sun people. these days? Right? Everyone's inside. They don't go outside. They're on the computer all day long, like me. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm here, uh, man. I live in a beautiful place. We've got abundant sunshine year round, and my job is still indoors on a computer. So I, yeah. although I, you know, I love the sun. I look at it as a nutrient. I still very often don't get enough, just because of the nature of how much I work, and it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. And so let's let's just talk a little bit about vitamin D. How important it is. Um, Personally, I think it's probably the most important vitamin, especially when you're dealing with autoimmune stuff. Immune, immune, immune. I mean, it's like, uh, it's a direct correlation. You, 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 but the problem too is that not only are we not getting enough sun, there's a, uh, are you familiar with some of the mutations in the vitamin D receptor? Have you kind of got into that at this all? This isn't something I've learned much about. I'd love, yeah, could you oh like me on it, man? If you want to give oh me the, my the gosh. tips, no. Certain, I'll do it in a summary. There's certain, quite a few, part of uh, populations that have um, uh, mutations in the vitamin D receptor. And you can get a test, a genetic test to see if you have a, it's called polymorphism. And basically mm -hmm. you have this alteration in this receptor for the vitamin D receptor. And um, another thing that microbes will do, bacteria and viruses, uh, as a strategy is they'll block your vitamin D receptor to basically shut down your immune system so they can take over. And so there's a huge, huge connection between vitamin D deficiency and autoimmune, especially when you get into MS. Um, and so there's a whole protocol. So there's a couple ways you can fix that. You know, you need to take more vitamin D, you need to keep increasing it to the point where it, it connects. Um, or there's another thing you can take is in the medical community, it's called vitamin D anal uh, receptor analogs, which is basically, it's kind of like a, Another thing that kind of pushes in the vitamin D without having to take vitamin D. And um, so there's a certain, but the problem is like, 
they're using medications, right? They're, it's a, like Benicar, it's a blood pressure medication that's a, that actually bypasses the whole system and gives you some connects vitamin D in there. But you can also use bile salts. That's another thing that you can do. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, bile salts uh, will help um, open up that vitamin D receptor big time. And um, Interesting. So I wonder if there's a connection between gallbladder function and vitamin D production in the body as well. Massive. You, you can't, without bile, and you're going to have a bile deficiency if you don't have a gallbladder. If you're deficient in bile, you're, you're not going to be able to absorb vitamin D too well because uh, you need the bile to break it down, at least from foods. Um, but they're even looking now at um, infants that are born at certain uh, months of the year um, having less autoimmune based on how much sunshine the mother got. You know, if yes, and this is, a big, this is a big thing in a lot of cultures. You know, when you look at – this book right here is really cool. Um, I think uh, – I don't. we might have talked about this book last time I was on your show. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm crazy. I like to mark oh, yeah. out my books. Yes. But, uh, nu- I love that Nutrition book. and Physical Degeneration yeah. from Weston A. Price. And he talks about the timing of pregnancy was kind of important in a lot of these cultures. And they would actually time pregnancy around the abundance of certain foods. And you know what's interesting? A lot of these foods were vitamin D rich foods that these different cultures were using as fertility boosting foods. So, um, you know, certain shellfish were used a lot. Also, here in the Andes, they would trade for this little egg called an angelote. Uh, from the Angelote, and this is a skate-like creature, and it's the unfertilized egg, and it's got a lot of iodine, and very likely, of course, because it's a sea creature, probably a significant amount of vitamin D. And pregnancy would be timed in a lot of these cultures so that the children could be born under the most optimal environmental conditions. Of course, you don't want a kid born in the middle of winter when the mother's already depleted, when the food supply is so crap. Um, you know, So the, I think it's very, very important, and that's that's a fascinating observation you just made there. Well, you, even like MS occurs in um, latitudes above a certain, um, uh, lat- actually it occurs in, uh, high, higher than a certain latitude. So if you're, yeah. you're not getting enough sun, your risk factor for MS goes straight up in vertical simply because of vitamin D. Vitamin D is mm-hmm. an immune modulator in, involved in 2000 genes. I mean, it's like, it's so key. Now, unless that person living in the North is consuming salmon or mm-hmm. fish eggs uh which is loaded with vitamin d so cod which liver most oil. cultures would have been doing just a few yeah. generations back right until yeah. you get the bread you get the grains you get cheerios in every place you get pasteurized milk which basically turns it into something that i wouldn't want to even give to my dog when you've got you know raw milk that you know your your ancestors in sweden and uh, you know the swiss also were using in abundance and some of these yeah. cultures living almost exclusively off of raw cheeses uh fermented dairy products and raw fresh milk you know i mean these are great foods but you pasteurize it you give people the wheat the corn the soy and they leave their heritage foods behind and look what happens we get obesity we get diabetes shoot ms i mean that's that's such a fascinating correlation there and you know, now that I think about it here in Ecuador on the equator, you see very few people with MS. I mean, it's just, it's not as common. You're not seeing things like uh, rickets very often here either. And <laughs> right. the diet is pretty westernized, right? There is a lot of Western disease coming in from the vegetable oils, from the junk food that we're getting here. And, uh, you know, Coca-Cola and all this crap that people drink here instead of a uh, you know, water, <laughs> or, right? Uh, you know, maybe, maybe a little buttered coffee if you guys are into it. But um, yeah, the uh, the diet is definitely degenerated in a lot of these areas, and of course, the disconnection from the sun, coupling with that, is going to create a massive health deficit, and the immune system is just yeah. it's just not going to function. It's not. In fact, uh, those of you that are watching, if you wanted to do a five second test to see if you're deficient in vitamin D, do this, okay? You, you just need to press on your shin, okay? It's the bone right on your, uh, your lower leg. And it, see it, press pretty hard and see if there's any tenderness. And then, or, and then you can press on your sternum right here, this bone, your breastbone, press in there. If it's sore, if it's very painful, um, chances are you may be a low in vitamin D. And what you do, take some vitamin D, recheck it in one hour, and that pain will be completely gone. Uh, because one of the big symptoms of vitamin D deficiency is bone pain. Interesting. Yeah. You know, rickets is really common in a lot of the Western world as well. I mean, uh, uh, unfortunately we see a lot of, well, there's a, a, um, 
there was a news article that was circulating around this year about a girl that had such bad rickets and such bad, uh, you know, vitamin and mineral deficiency from her parents raising her on a very restrictive vegan diet. And, uh, you know, not saying that every single kid raised on a vegan diet is going to manifest these symptoms, but this was a specific case that was pretty shocking. I think she was a British girl and this 12, I think she was nine or 12 and just really debilitating uh, rickets. And this girl was in such bad shape. The parents were actually, uh, I believe, legally held responsible for it. So yeah, get that vitamin D. So now, uh, what are you, some of your preferred vitamin D sources as far as like dietary sources go? Hands down, the best one is going to be cod liver oil um, or cod liver. Um, mm-hmm. you, do you ever, you ever have the cod liver in a can? You can actually get it. Have you ever had that? Yeah. Yeah. Good. We've got cans full of it here. It's great. It's amazing. I don't know. You know, it's funny because we've got some, some little recipes that we like to make and the kids like it too, uh, that kind of use the cod livers. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, our, our kids really like like some little low carb bread things with the cod livers on them. Um, or these little flax pancakes that my wife makes, but you know, I think uh, with the polyunsaturated fatty level of flax, I've kind of backed off of using so much of it. But <coughs> excuse me, uh, but yeah, cod livers are good. My kids will eat a whole can of it. It's like it's like pudding. Um, but the cod liver, if you take um, what's better, what's what's different about cod liver than fish oil is the cod liver has not just um, DHA and EPA, but it has vitamin D and vitamin A in a perfect fifty-fifty split. So you get the benefits of vitamin A, which is essential for night vision and internal skin, um, internal like lesions, internal like ulcers and stuff like that, sinus stuff, mucous membranes, dry eyes, dry mouth, that's vitamin A. So um, like we have um, a baby in the house right now, Lucy, little Lucy, my son's um, daughter. And so- Your grandfather. Yeah, I know. Uh, She's um, four months. She's Congratulations. Fine. This is your first grandchild? Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, man. Yeah. We haven't talked yeah. since then. I'm, that's so cool. It's, yeah. Is it, is it kind of like having your own baby except without all the responsibility stuff? It's wonderful. It seems cool. I don't have to change the diaper. Uh, I can just go in there, play with her, and then give her back. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, she's crying. Not my responsibility. <laughs> exactly. I'll have to um, do. I did a video with her. It was just kind of like a. Yes, it was for clickbait, but I, I took Lucy and I just, I actually held her and I didn't say anything. I did the whole video on the board holding Lucy and no one even paid attention. So, but I got a lot of clicks. Um, but um, Lucy is a very healthy baby and, you know, she's breastfed and I'm making sure that her mother, Jordy, who's married to my son, Jordan, um, is doing all the right things nutrition wise. But, you know, Lucy is really hungry. So the only two things that we're feeding her right now, just small amounts, would be cod liver oil and just a little bit each day, as well as um, uh, grass-fed pasture um, egg yolks, not the whites, just the yolk. Yeah. Mush it up, give it to her. She just sucks it up like crazy. You should see her after that, that cod liver oil. She loves it. Her teeth are going to come in perfect. Her skin, she has the big cheeks. She's such a healthy baby. So, That's so um, cool. Yeah. So that's, um, you know, what's interesting. Our daughter, um, she had some dental caries, which is kind of what threw us into this, uh, looking into high fat nutrition. Uh, you know, actually I would have never been into a ketogenic diet as far as my life timeline goes. I would have never probably heard of keto or worried so much about getting in enough animal fats had my daughter not experienced dental caries. So she, uh, she had, you know, which is tooth decay. If for those of you who don't know, very rampant in the Western world now, uh, you'd be amazed at how many kids get teeth extracted before their adult teeth come in. She had some dental caries and it freaked us out. We learned about the principles that were taught by Weston A. Price. We read his book, started looking into kind of ancestral nutrition. What were people eating just a few generations back before they had all these issues with health, with teeth? Uh, um, he was noticing that tuberculosis le- uh, levels in these countries and these societies pre-industrialized food supply. Uh, there was no tuberculosis. There was no dental caries. Their jaws were formed properly. The women had easier childbirth because their hips were wide enough. And we don't see this so much in the Western world now with uh, you know, our really degenerated food supply. The women's hips are getting closer together. A lot of people have difficulty in birth. And uh, a lot of kids have dental caries. So 
this led us to actually researching the importance of fats, the importance of fat soluble vitamins. So yeah, back in 2012, this is what kind of sparked our journey. Wow. 2013, it must've been because she was born in 2012. And, um, yeah, we gave her lots of butter, you know, for the uh, for the vitamin K two. Yeah. Butter is also a pretty decent source of vitamin D. Um, lots of animal fats. We started giving her liver, uh, grass fed beef liver, and um, of course egg yolks were another one of her favorites. And she uh, her teeth hardened up. They stopped the tooth decay. It was able to be stopped in its tracks. And now her adult teeth are coming in, and they're perfectly normal. Our second child, he's got perfect teeth. You know, he was blessed enough to be raised on a on a lot of animal foods. And like you said, the first the first food we gave him were raw egg yolks. You know, wow. Egg yolks from our chickens. You know, I, 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 as a child, I craved butter and I didn't know, of course I didn't connect it out. That's vitamin K2. K2 is what I needed. And I had every single tooth filled with a cavity, you know? But K2 is, um, is fascinating. It works with vitamin D3. And K2 is essential in the transportation of the calcium out of the soft tissues into the bone, but it really makes really good teeth, solid teeth, good bone structure. But K2 also, um, people don't realize this, it gives you um, more cardiac output. So let's say, for example, you're, you're exercising and you just don't quite have that endurance and you want more, just take some K2. That'll give you that edge because it, out, it outputs more energy from the mitochondria. Uh, it's not just about calcium, but it's, uh, I'll, I'll usually take it before I'll work out, maybe about an hour before, and I can go up hills like crazy. So it's it definitely that's works. That's great. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. I actually had not heard that factoid. I think, uh, you know, people get so afraid of these fats. They think lard, they think butter, they think fatty steaks, they think fatty meat, they think bone marrow, or, you know, even, you know, brain, where they think these are full of dangerous cholesterol and saturated fat. And that saturated fat is so bad. But um, uh, people don't realize how important these things are. I mean, your, your whole body is made of cholesterol. Um, you know, I think, uh, I forget how many pounds of cholesterol we actually have in our body, but it's ridiculous. I mean, every one of our cells is, the cell walls are made up of cholesterol. Our brain is made up of cholesterol. We need fats. And uh, the body just runs so efficiently when we use fat as a fuel source. So I think... Um, yeah, the, the ketogenic diet and uh, you know even a, a carnivorous diet, which is becoming much more popular now. The way I like to teach a carnivore diet is using nose to tail eating and making it more of a ketogenic carnivore diet. So a lot of people focus a little bit more on uh, just eating as much steak as they can. But I like to teach people how to actually use the fats because you know things like sheep fat, uh, beef suet, these are really affordable, and you can get these from you know a local rancher. You can get these from places like. Uh, um, I don't know if you, you know, like U.S. Wellness, maybe. Uh, oh, yeah. There's some yeah. of these groups. I order a lot yeah. from U.S. Wellness. John, I think there it's you John go. Woods. He's, uh, he's actually coming to my summit. Um, he was one of the sponsors, and he gives these samples out. And I'm like, it's, like, it's the best. It's, it's grass-fed uh, 100%. Um, but he, you know, he, he, he's very, you should talk to him sometime, interview him on your show. You, maybe you have, but fascinating uh, understanding of, of, Grass fed and what it does nutritionally. It's just, it's awesome. You know, there's another, um, there's another person I'll have to turn you on to. You could do an interview on her. She's a podiatrist. She's a surgeon as well for the feet, right? And this is what she told me. And you could probably ask her more about this, but I just, I was like, it just stuck with me. She was doing, she goes, you know, you got different colored people on the outside. But in the inside, they're all the same color. And then she said, except vegans. And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? She goes, yeah, when I, um, if someone is a vegan, uh, when you cut their foot open, all the, the, the muscle is like gray. I'm like, what? Wow. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. So anyway, that's. Uh, what is her name point. again? I'll find out. I have it okay. in my database and you can. Uh, you could talk to her and get more data, but I just stuck with me and I didn't, didn't really ask her too much more about that, but I was like, Hmm, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. And then you start to delve deeper into some of this information. You start looking at the importance of these animal fats, the importance of these animal foods for everything from fertility to bone mineral density to, you know, maintaining the muscle mass. I and mean, it's just, it's so important that we look at, um, you know, animal foods as a, um, 
I mean, I, I make it the most important part of my diet. And I think that people who are maybe vegetarian leaning should at least consider including some and uh, maybe, you know, replace if, if you're eating tofu and you think it's healthy, you're, you've been misled, right? The tofu is not healthier for us than a steak and a nice marbled steak uh, will always satiate as well as any other food on the planet. And it's uh yeah, the, uh, the fats, the animal fats are crucial. So, I mean, one yeah. of my favorite fats is, uh, is suet. What I like to do is I'll take a steak, I'll cook a steak, I'll cook it real rare, I like it rare. And then I, uh, I'll take some, I'll chop up the suet in some little bits and maybe just pull off, peel off a little disc of it. The suet being the fat around the kidney of a ruminant animal. And, um, and I'll just warm it up a little bit on the skillet there. I'll still leave that really rare and basically raw in the middle. But that fat is just so good. It's so easy to digest. Um, compared to most other fats for me. And I just, uh, yeah, I love it. So animal fats are crucial. And um, hey, nothing wrong with some coconut oil. If you can handle the coconut oil, uh, if you can handle the coconut oil, it's great. But when you look at something like you mentioned, you know, pastured lard, having, you know, when, if the pigs are outdoors, pastured lard is going to have significant amounts of vitamin D, yeah. higher vitamin D content than almost any other food you're going to find. Foods like cod livers, um, you know, there's actually some vitamin D also in beef liver as well as vitamin A. Um, you're going to find that if you replace those plant fats that you've been focused on thinking that those plant fats are healthy, especially those vegetable oils, man, like the, those are the worst offenders. What are you, you saying? Replace the oils animal fat, you're going to feel better. Soy oil is not good. Is that what you're trying to tell Soy me? Soy oil, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah, you I wouldn't bubble. feed that to my worst enemy. I wouldn't oh, think that's my worst enemy. And you know what's crazy? A lot of these people that hate me so much on the internet, these vegans who hate me so much, those poor guys are eating this stuff regularly. Eating the, the cotton seed oil, uh, the corn oil, the what canola, rapeseed oil, canola oil. It's like these you know, yeah. rapeseed oil. It just it doesn't that sound delicious? It um, sounds real good. We're literally eating. Yeah, in in college, um, I think you know because I had this fixed idea that you know I need to get rid of fat because it's just ingrained in you. I, um, I, I made some meatloaf, right? And I, I didn't read the recipe uh, that well because um, it's said to drain some of the excess grease. So I ate a pound of meatloaf, but of course I put an entire loaf of bread in there and not to mention a whole bunch of ketchup, right? Well, that started my gallbladder problem. I mean, that was probably the, and of course we were doing deep fry night with Crisco. So I was ingrained that like fat's bad, but it wasn't the fat. It's not the fat. It was the ketchup the bread and the trans fats so um just it's just another point that got me off track for probably a decade before i came full circle and realized you can do fat as long as you don't add all the, the, the carbs and sugar you don't add sugar you know, like you say well i'm eating fat i'm eating ice cream yeah but it has so much sugar in it it's going to create uh sticky blood and all sorts of issues you know yeah yeah if you want to gain weight as quickly as you can eat a lot of carbs and a lot of fat at the same time oh yeah and just gain as much weight as you can and now i'm not talking about good weight i'm not talking about you know uh right. you know putting on muscle i'm talking about if you just want to gain a bunch of weight mostly fat do that eat carbs and fat in a great abundance you know i'd say if you're going to do a high carb diet you definitely need to eat less fat if you're going to be healthy right these you know insulin signaling is i mean a lot of us in the low carb community we talk about insulin resistance, right? Insulin resistance being the root of many diseases, uh, you know, even uh, uh, being highly implicated in heart disease. But we don't realize that fat does play a role in insulin resistance as well. Let me explain. So I'm not trying to make anybody afraid of fat, but understand this principle. When you eat a ketogenic diet, when you eat a high fat diet, your muscle tissues don't want to take up glucose because you save the glucose for certain parts of the body that require it. There are parts of the brain that need glucose. Your liver is going to partition the glucose that you do have. So what happens is your muscle tissues will be using fat for fuel. When you're using fat for fuel and there's an abundance of fat in the muscles and in the tissues and the blood, it signals your body not to take up glucose because you should be either using glucose or fat Right, And of course, it's not just a binary system. We're constantly using both fuel sources throughout the day. But your muscle tissues don't want to take up glucose when you're burning fat as fuel. So when you're taking in a high-fat diet, if you add a bunch of sugar to that, your body is going to become physiologically insulin resistant because your muscles don't want to take up the glucose because they're being told, like it's, they're being tricked into thinking that it's 
almost like a fasting state or in a ketogenic state where you're using fat for fuel and you don't use glucose in the muscles. If you take in a bunch of fat and carb at the same time, you will make yourself insulin resistant and you will store body fat. And that's going to start storing in the liver. You're going to get fatty liver. Then once you start storing that visceral fat, it creates systemic insulin resistance that is just very, very difficult to get rid of if you're going to continue eating carbohydrates. So that's why pulling out the carbs, uh, not worrying about fat, not saying pull out the fat, eating a ketogenic diet that you are burning fat in will allow you to get rid of that insulin resistance and burn the body fat eventually. So it's, it's, it's important funny. to realize that funny. both of those together are a deadly combo. Funny, you, you're talking about something I could like just... I just did a video on it, but I have a very interesting reference on it. Um, this is, um, yeah, this one right here. I don't know if you can see that. Evidence that acute insulin administration enhances LDL cholesterol susceptibility to oxidation. There you go. So insulin increasing oxidation of cholesterol. Yeah. Yeah. So basically if you're, and it, it talks about also, um, you get oxidized cholesterol if insulin is high, even if your blood sugars are normal. So if you have insulin resistance, you're pumping out, your body is making more insulin. It's not coming necessarily from the sugar, your body's just making more, and that is oxidizing the cholesterol. So when people see their cholesterol out of control when they start a ketogenic diet or whatever, realize that that is going to improve as insulin res resistance goes away and as you do it longer because your system is changing over and it's becoming more efficient. But, um, you know, it's but also just, the cholesterol that's not oxidized. Should we worry about no, that? That's no, another question. So no, guys like don't. Dave Feldman, and no. I know you talked to Dave, right? You yeah. Know your friends with Dave Feldman. He's a great guy. He's done a lot of good work at cholesterolcode.com and you've done a lot of good work raising awareness uh, of this on your uh, site as well. So I'm sure if anybody was to search cholesterol in Dr. Berg's videos, you'd find some great information about why we don't necessarily need to worry about high cholesterol. Some of us on a ketogenic or high fat diet do get elevated cholesterol. The cholesterol is not the boogeyman that it's been made out to be. Just like you know, glucose in and of itself is not bad, but when you've got an overabundance of glucose, you can get those advanced glycation end products. We can start to get um, a lot of oxidative stress in the body. It's about balance, right? So if you're getting oxidation of LDL from all that insulin, you're going to have issues. And they're blaming the fat for what clearly the sugar and the insulin um, are very likely highly culpable in. And of course, the body's not so simple as you know black and white. There's a lot going on. You're looking at systems interacting with other systems, and it's this beautiful, delicate dance within us. But, um, but the cholesterol is not the enemy. Maybe the insulin is the dang enemy. It is. It is no doubt. Uh, absolutely. It's the, it's the thing. I mean, you, you, you work with clients, you see the results um, probably all that long. People are reporting, Oh, I lost all this weight. My diabetes, my heart is getting better. And you, just like, like I do a show on Saturday, uh, Friday morning and uh, I have a nice uh, uh, chance to just to get a sample from all over the world, people calling in and it's just over and over and over. It's like massive, results this is what happened i lost another you know 10 pounds of my cholesterol everything came back i mean like it's just like over and over and over i mean there's very few people that ever said they're not like winning like crazy and there's no one that says they're getting worse so i'm like wow you know what it's pretty obvious to me that it's the way to go yeah, it's pretty amazing. I mean, it, it makes my day when I get people from, you know, clients that I did private coaching with two to three years ago, sometimes will contact me and just update me on what's happened. And they'll send me pictures and I'll recognize the before picture, but it almost, it's like, did you Photoshop this? This is a different person. And it's just so ridiculous to see, you know, people losing a hundred pounds in eight months is, I mean, these are the regular stories that I'm hearing. These are regular testimonials that people are sending to me. And it's just, it's so fun to be able to work with so many people and to actually you know, help them where they've yo-yo dieted before. They've never been able to find something that they can maintain and sustain long-term. And a ketogenic and a low-carb approach where you're focusing on healthy fats, healthy fats from animals, um, whole unrefined sources of food, real human nutrition, and they get the results they wanted their whole life and they do it effortlessly and enjoyably. And then they start changing other people's lives around them because everyone asks them, hey, what, what happened? What right. did you do? 
You know, sometimes they'll send their friends and family my way and they'll come to me for coaching or something, or we do a, a our keto and carnivore collective, our group coaching thing. We do this each month where um, we run it sort of like a course, but it's with a lot of live interactive voice chats. So we do two voice chats every single week. And uh, one of those is a lesson and another one's a Q and A where everybody's bouncing ideas off of each other. Everybody's supporting each other. We use a, um, you know, a private forum for this. So each month we've got a different group, but it's just amazing seeing these people and their friends and family learning so much and, uh, and integrating these principles into their life. And um, it's just amazing seeing how transformative it can be. And I know you probably feel the same way for me. It's just, it's like, it's normal now. It's like, I don't yeah. get hungry. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I, yeah. if I go for a heavy workout or something and I haven't eaten all day, I might feel kind of hungry before the meal, but it's never like it was before where it's, you know, I'm crashing after a meal. My blood sugar's up and down all day. Um, you know, inflammatory responses from food, digestive issues I've had in the past, you know, these things that have been um, so detrimental to my quality of life you know, I don't want to take them for granted at all. And I'm not saying I take them for granted, but the new normal, it can be, it's so interesting. The new normal is so different from what it used to be for me. And yeah. it's cool talking to people all the time and seeing them on their path and seeing where they're at in their journey. Cause I do sometimes forget what it felt like in my own life because it's so far back behind me. But then, mm -hmm. you know, talking to clients all the time and seeing people out there in the trenches, trying to get their life back, trying to get their health back, um, you know, helps to keep me grounded and keep me appreciative and, uh, you know, kind of appreciate the blessings of being able to function well in the human body, being able to have mental clarity, to have stable blood glucose levels, have low inflammation levels and to fuel your body with fat. And, uh, you know, getting, you know, nose to tail nutrition from animal foods is something that has just really changed the game for me and my family and for, you know, I'm sure uh, millions of people who've tuned into your channel as well. And it's just really cool. You know, I mean, we don't get TV spots. You don't, you don't see you know, Dr. Berg or Tristan from Primal Edge Health getting invited on, uh, on Dr. Oz. Although, I don't know, man, maybe you one day could, uh, could jump on the Dr. Oz train. But I wouldn't, even if you called, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't be interested yeah, at all. It's I, just not my not my gig um it's just it's too commercially I, i'm not into it it's yeah, too, too yeah. Much hype. And that's what's so cool it's you can scripted. reach so many people through your platform on youtube and change so many lives uh and you know what it's some of these youtube channels yours being one of the biggest ones I mean, you're probably getting as many people watching your videos every week as even tune into something like Dr. Oz, you know, not trying to, you know, toot your horn or, or inflate an ego too big, but it's like you reach a lot of people for free through YouTube with information that you're just giving out. So, you know, I think it's, uh, I think it's great what guys like you are doing. And, um, you know, I don't think there's anybody out there who works as hard at putting out two videos every day um, as you do, man. Wow. Wow. Thanks. Appreciate that. Well, I appreciate you coming on and, uh, Guys, you need to check this out. I'll put a link link down below. It's a, a great book. Um, uh, we're gonna we're gonna be doing more recipes, my wife and I, and so I'll, we'll have to do some out of this book right here and and get the word out because it's a great high quality book. Tell your wife um, we appreciate the energy she put into this and the work. It's like a piece of art. I'm like uh, amazing. So you got content and the art. It's nice to look at all these wonderful pictures as well. Yeah, yeah, I really like some of the pictures she put in here. I mean, some of these old Renaissance paintings and stuff are really interesting. And, um, you know, she, she did just such a great job. I, um, I really appreciate all the work she put into this. I'd love to see if you, if you make the, the pemmican from the, uh, the book. Right. That's a really cool travel food. I know you're going to be doing conferences and stuff. And pemmican's a nice food for people to travel with. It's, yeah. a, uh, it's kind of a Native American recipe made of fat and dried meat that will keep for years. You don't wow. need to keep it in the refrigerator and it's really easy to make. And you can even include dried heart and liver in there. That's what we like to do. We mix in at least 10 to 20% liver with our pemmican. And it's just, it's a really cool food. So um, awesome. again, man, it's, it's an honor talking to you. It's an honor to, uh, you know, to be featured on your channel and I really appreciate everything you're doing and appreciate you giving me the time of day and, uh, and I'm so excited for you being a grandfather, man. You're the youngest looking grandpa I know. You look like you look 39 right now, and the at least on camera now. I don't know if you've got a live Photoshop guy that's doing your, that's making you look, you know, airbrushing you into in the yeah, youthful. It's all airbrushed. Yeah, I'm actually 40 years old right now. I had I we had Jordan when he when we when I was 13. 
<laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like Jordan and Jordy. That's a funny. That's, yeah, that's really I know. Funny. Yeah. I've got awesome. a buddy whose name is Jay and his fiance's name is Jamie. That's cool, man. Awesome. 